Hello, welcome to Benjamin Tree. Today we're going to be looking at a formula that will tell us what is the nth day of a month. So we could find the second Tuesday of a month or the fourth Wednesday of the month. So just as a review, remember that when we use the function weekday, if we have a result of one, that means it's a Sunday. If we have a result of three, that's a Tuesday. If we have a result of seven, that's a Saturday. So we need to keep that in mind while we're doing this. So what I have here in this first blue table is I have in the A column the year that we want to use, the B column the month that we want to use. In this case, we want it to be January. The C column the weekdays that we want. So for the first row, we're going to be using 3, which is a Tuesday. For the second row, we're going to be using 7, which is a Saturday. Now in the D column, we want to figure out what occurrence is this. So basically this says, what is the third occurrence of Tuesday in January 2016? And the next row is, what is the third Saturday in January 2016? So there's one long formula that we're going to be putting here in the E column. But what I've done here in the green table is we're going to break it down. So that way it makes sense. We're just not going to throw up the formula and get confused. We're going to break it down and understand what each part is doing. So, first thing we need to do is we need to find the start day that we're going to be basing our formula off of. So, because we're talking about January 2016, we want that start day to be January 1st. So, here in the G column, we're going to make a function using date, equal date, and the year we're going to use for this row is A2, that's the year that we want. And the month we're going to use is B2, that has the month that we want, January, and the day is going to be 1, January 1st, 2016. And that's what we get. So in the next row, we're going to say equal to date, and we're going to say A3, that has the number 2016 for the number that for the year we want. Then we're going to go B3, that has a 1 for the month we want, and then we're going to put a 1 in for the day to get January 1st, 2016. Okay, so the next part we want to find is the nearest day. So let's look at the first row. We're going to be using the weekday Tuesday. We want to find the nearest Tuesday to uh, Friday, January 1st. So we have Friday here, January 1st, and we go back 1, 2, 3. That's the Tuesday. That's closer than going forward, 1, 2, 3, 4. So how do we find that? We're going to use a simple formula. We're going to say equal to C2, okay, so C2 is the weekday that we're using, 3, which represents the Tuesday, minus the weekday of the date, January, um, let's see, January 2016. So we want to put A3, uh, sorry, A2, because that's the month we're using, B2 for the month, for the year, then the month we're using, and then 1, to show the day. So what happens is when we put weekday date A2 B2 1, it says what is the weekday of January 1st, 2016? That's a Friday. So Friday is going to be 6. So Tuesday is a 3 here. So C2 minus the 6 will give us a negative 3. So basically it's saying to get to the nearest day that we want to find, which is going to be a Tuesday, we have to go back three spaces from January 1st, which is a Friday. So 1, 2, 3 gives us to Tuesday. Okay, so one more time. Uh, let's look at this next row. We're looking for the first, we're looking at for the nearest Saturday to Friday, January 1st, 2016. That's a 7. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to C3, which is the 7, minus the weekday of the date of A3, 2016, the month. B3, January, and the day 1, January 1st, 2016. That's giving us a 1. So if we want to get to the closest Saturday to January 1st, we just need to go forward one day, and we're there. So let's move the date January 1st to the nearest Tuesday. That's basically just going to be January 1st plus a negative 3, and that gives us December 29th, 2015 right here. Okay, to get to the nearest Saturday, we're just going to say January is equal to January 1st plus 1, and that gets us to January 2nd, 2016. So the reason why we want this nearest day, we want to figure out how many days forward we need to move forward from this point. So how many weeks forward do we need to get to the third Tuesday? 
how many weeks forward do we need to move to get to the third Saturday? Okay, so let's take a look here. What we want to do is, if we're, if we're at December 29th, 2015, we want to get to the third, we want to get to the third Friday, the third Tuesday of January 2016. That's going to be one, two, three, January 19th. So to get from December 29th, 2015, to January 1st, or 19th, 2016, we go one, two, three weeks forward. So we need to make a section of the formula to tell us how many weeks we need to go forward. So we need to go to the first week of January. But let's take a look at the Saturday over here. We want to get to the third Saturday of January. That's going to be one, two, three. That's going to be January 16th. But we don't want to go for three weeks. We only want to go for two weeks because our closest Saturday is the first Saturday. So we need to pull that out of what we need to add to. We only want to go one, two weeks forward. So now that you have that idea, we're going to build a formula to understand that. So what we want to do is we want to see, we're going to see if this weekday is greater than that we're looking for is greater than the actual weekday that we have as uh, January 1st. So let's take a look here. So we're going to say equal to C2 greater than or equal to weekday, the date of A2, B2, 1. Okay, it's saying is this, which is bigger? Is this, is C2, is this the Tuesday that we're looking for, the, the number that represents Tuesday, bigger than the week the number that represents the first day of the month that we're looking in. So it's false. Because remember, the first day of the month is a 6, which represents Friday, and the Tuesday is a 3, which represents Tuesday. Okay? So let's take a look at the first Saturday. So our weekday is C3, which is a 7. We want to see, is it greater than or equal to the first, the weekday of the first day of the of the month and that we're using for January. So we're going to say equal, greater than or equal to weekday, not wheel day, weekday of the date A3 2016, B3 January and the first day. This is true. So as you can see, because we're behind here before the Tuesday, because we're behind, we're not in January. So we need to go one, two, three forward. Okay, but here we're already in January, so we only need to go one, two. So that's where this true or false comes from. Now we need to ha figure out how many weeks we need to go forward. Okay, so remember a false means zero, a true means one. So we're going to change this equation up. We're going to change it to D2 minus this true or false statement. Okay, so we're getting three because that means we want to go, we're looking for D2 here is how many weeks forward we want to go to. We're going to go three weeks forward. Because we're in the negative, we subtracted zero from that because it's false because we don't, we want to go forward all three weeks. Now let's look at this here. So we're going to say equal to D2 minus C, sorry, not D2, D3 minus this true or false statement we're getting two because we're already here we took so basically this d3 is the three and this greater than or equal to is a true so we're taking three minus one so this is telling us we only need to go forward two weeks okay but we don't want to go for three we want to go for three weeks or two weeks we have to multiply that by seven to get the number of days so we're going to multiply that by seven so if we want to go forward Three weeks, we have to go forward 21 days, and we multiply this by 7, we will go forward two weeks or 14 days. So the new date is going to be equal to the nearest Tuesday plus three weeks forward, which is January 19, 2016, the third Tuesday in 2016 in January. All right, for this, we want to go from the nearest Saturday plus two weeks forward to get to our third Saturday in January. One, so one, two, three. So that's how we break down this entire equation, this entire formula to get to find the nth occurrence of a certain day.
Now we're going to put that all together. So we're going to take all this. We're going to take this and this and this and put them all together in one giant formula so that way if you have lots and lots of dates you can just drag them down and it automatically computes everything for you. So we want to start off on the first day of the month. It's going to be equal to date of A2 which is 2016 month of B2 January and the first day of the month. That gives us January 1st 2016 that we're working with. Next, we want to add, and I'm going to use parentheses here because it's just easier to group it together to know what we're doing. We want to figure out the difference between the weekday we're looking for minus the actual day, which is Friday. So we're going to say we're looking for C2, which is a Tuesday, 3, and we're going to subtract a weekday, which is a going to be the date of A2, B2, one. Okay. So this here is saying okay, three C2 is three. That's the Tuesday we're looking for. Minus the weekday of January 1st, 2016, which is a Friday, six. So three minus six is minus three. So that means we need to go back three days to get to the closest Tuesday to the start of the month. Okay. Next part is how many weeks forward do we need to go for to get to the third occurrence of Tuesday in this month, or how many days, which is the weeks times seven. So we're going to say D2, that's three. We want to go three weeks forward, minus, in this parentheses, we have to put these in parentheses so that the right number is multiplied by seven, minus C2. Okay, so C2 is three. Okay, now if C2 is greater than or equal to weekday, of the date of the first day of the month, A2, B2, 1, okay, if this is true, that means we're already inside the month, so this is going to be true, so D2, which is the third occurrence, minus 1, is only going to tell us to go two weeks forward because we're already inside January. But if C2 is smaller than the weekday of the first day of the month, that means we had to go before this in the previous month to start off. And so we're going to get a false statement. So D2 minus 0 means go forward three weeks. Okay. So then we're going to take this result. So it's going to be either th 3 minus 1 or 3 minus 0 and multiply this by 7. So we hit enter and we get the same date here. January 19th, 2016. That is the third Tuesday in the month. Okay, if we change this the four to the f third Wednesday, we're going to get January 20th. Okay, but let's put it back to three for Tuesday. All right, so let's do that one more time. So this entire formula is equal to date. The year for this row is A3, the month is B3, and the day is one. So this is the start date, January 1st. Now we need to move to the closest Friday. So we're going to add C3, Friday, or Saturday, I'm sorry. We're going to go to the closest Saturday, which C3, which is 7, minus the weekday of the date of January 1st, 2003, or 2016. Okay, so that's going to give us a 1. We need to go one day forward to get to the closest Saturday to January 1st, 2016. Next, we're going to add the number of days forward to get to the third occurrence of Saturday. Okay, so we're going to take D3 and we're going to subtract that a true or false statement of 3C3. Okay, so D3 represents the occurrence we want the third Saturday minus the C3. Is C3 the Saturday, number for Saturday, is that greater than the number for Friday, the first January, January 1st, 2016? So C3 greater than or equal to weekday of our date of January sorry, of January to, uh, 1st, 2016. Okay, so we're going to get D3 minus 0, which is going to be minus 1 because we're already in January. And now we're going to multiply this by 7. And now we get January 16th, 2016. Now, if we wanted the second Saturday, it's going to be the 9th. So let's change it to 2 to show what the second Saturday is. Now we get January 9th, 2016.
Okay, and we'll switch it back. Now, this is a bit of a complicated formula, but hopefully by breaking it down, we can see how each piece works, and we can see how all this is put together. Now, for practice, you have a company, and you have meetings on the first Tuesday and the third Thursday of each month. So fill out the rest of this table, and in the D column, use the correct formula to find out when are the meetings going to be. When you finish that, you can check your answers in the practice answer key. Well, thank you for using Benjamin Tree today. We hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on our YouTube channel, our blog, or on our Facebook page. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.